So it's not about like, be like that image or that person that's impossible to fit into, but take a look at yourself and say, in what ways internally and externally could I just be my best? Yes. That's all. Yeah. And... Cool. All right, guys, welcome back to Growth Minds. I'm here with the one only Gabby Reese. Thanks for coming on the show all the way from Malibu. Oh, yeah. Well, at least I didn't come from Mexico City. Yes. You so win. that was that was a question, actually. <laughs> so we, we were talking about this off air that you were not born there, but no. you lived there when you were two for a little bit. Yeah. So my mother uh, trained dolphins in a circus in Mexico City. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. There was a very famous clown actually named Shepagin, and um, he got his start there. And, um, is he Mexican? Yes, oh, and okay. um, very talented. So, because when I moved to the Caribbean later, he would be on the TV. My stepfather's from Puerto Rico, yeah. and so I would see his show um, in Puerto Rico, which was kind of funny because it was you know ten years later or whatever. Oh, whoa! But um, yeah, so I lived there a bit, uh, not very long. And uh, I well, how long? To, uh, I caught whooping cough there, and so after about a year, I was sort of moved out of there. Whooping cough, like uh, yeah, wh- from, the, from the pollution? Uh, probably just a natural kids thing. You know, uh, it's like when okay, kids okay. get, you know, chicken pox. Gotcha. Whooping cough, you know. Gotcha. And they thought it was like a Mexican, like you just got it from Mexico. Well, so I think my mom was, to be honest, quite young. And to do that job, I think it, some people, you know, listen, you it, it, having a small child is a lot of work. Right. And sometimes uh, people are in positions to be more prepared for that than others. Sure. And I would say that... Um, she had a really good connection with the with the dolphins. <laughs> so I see. <laughs> it was it all worked out. I used to, I did hang out with the uh, the contortionist daughter though. There was a woman who was a contortionist. Whoa. Yeah, and I was like, there's my mother with like her costume and the, the dolphins, and then her mom had like her leg around her head. This is when you were two. Yeah. Okay. It's very but when things are that visual you still and remember. also very different environments, you can chapter out your life. I think a little easier. Oh, gotcha. So then yeah. you moved back to the U.S. at what age? I did it about two and a half. I actually moved to Long Island, New York. Gotcha. Which is where my mother was raised. Um, but I lived with uh, childhood neighborhood friends of hers. Yeah. They were a couple. And um, so I was raised there until I was about seven. Have you been back to Mexico City at all? You know, I haven't been back to Mexico City. I've been back to Mexico, the country, many yes. times. But I haven't gone back to Mexico City. And in fact, the gentleman who, this gentleman named Pedro Lavia owned that circus and his son, who is now grown in yeah. his mid-40s, is a friend of mine. And in, in L.A.? Um, he lives off of an island, off of Mexico. His name's Robbie Lavia, and he uh, d- travels around everywhere for business. Yeah. But it's just funny. like. That's cool. Yeah. You should definitely visit Mexico City. It's, it's, it's changed quite a lot, I imagine. It's still got the negative like perception, I think, here in the U.S., just given how yeah. dangerous Mexico in general is. But sure. the city itself is actually really, really cool. Despite the pollution. Yeah. Well, I think, listen, any Latin culture, you know, food, music, dance, yeah. gathering, family, these things are, I mean, I think all kind of tribal places have that. But, you know, sure. I grew up again in the Caribbean and my stepfather was from Puerto Rico. So it's like all that music and all that food. Like you can't, be, the best thing about Miami is like the Cuban influence. Yes, so definitely. So it's the same thing. I For sure. Imagine. Yeah, a lot of it is actually similar to the to to LA, I guess. In some ways, there sure. there is that influence of like Hispanic influence. It's very spread out. The weather, the food, and multicultural. And but I guess if you live here, it's not like a unique thing to go visit. So I think it is unique. I think listen, I, some of the they have some you know interesting old buildings and yeah, they have some a beautiful lot of stuff there. there for sure. Yeah, gotcha. And I don't stand out at all when I go to a place like Mexico. City. <laughs> Yes. I'm sure it's like you. Actually, you're probably more rare there than I am. Yeah. Well, the problem is now with the coronavirus, there's this, there's, you got a double <laughs> oh. standard there. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I got to like carry around the Canadian passport just like, yeah. listen, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's all the bien, it's all the bien, you yeah. know? But uh, That's yeah, funny. It's, a, it's a tough time for sure. Um, but, anyways, back to you. So, you, you lived in Mexico City, you, you grew up in Long Island, mm-hmm. and um, have you always. Obviously, we just met each other for the first time. Yeah. You're very tall. I am very tall. Have you always... Or you're all very, very short. I don't know. Well, you, Max you guys is, Max is pretty tall. tall. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just kidding. He's pretty tall. He's like... He's about the height, yeah. Yeah. I was tall very young. I was six okay. feet at 12, and six, oh I finished God. growing at 15. I'm 6'3". 
So um, well, what was that like growing up in, in in childhood? Like, does that mean you were like the popular kid, or were you bullied no. from that? Yeah. Well, you they were. try. You, yes, and I I think I'm much sort of meaner now than I was as a young girl. You're just trying to yeah. fit in, and you're trying to you know be like everyone else. Yeah. And you don't really. You're not overly combative. Like sure. if someone messes with you, most likely, I should have thought that through and been like, wait a second, I'm six feet tall. Yeah. But instead, I I uh, I think I think to anyone who's listening, listen. Here's here's what I know about that: is whatever is the thing that is hard for you, is the best gift you ever had. Because I think when it's all nice when you're young, then you have to learn some of those lessons later. Mm. And I think it's almost better just to get it over with. So yeah. whether you know you're funny looking because you're tall, or you're different uh, from a different ethnicity, and you you know your parents have accents, or maybe you don't have much, yeah. these are all things that if we can get in touch with them in a way that makes sense to us, mm -hmm. that like it's one of your, you know when people talk about their superpowers, and um, yeah, it was it was, and there's no hiding, right? Like yeah. I was six three at fifteen. They I went to a new school once, and they thought I was a substitute teacher. Oh my! You God. know it's like all that stuff. But uh, it's, it's such a gift. Wow. And how did you deal with that growing up? Like, was, did that, I mean, I guess, would that, would it like ang was that an angry time because of the bullying that you faced through that? Or like, I was angry for other reasons. I was okay. more angry. I had other, I had bigger fish to fry than worrying about people reacting to my height. Sure. I think I bounced around a lot as a kid. I didn't always live with my, my mom. Uh, my father w died when I was five in a plane crash. Um, I think I had so many other things on my mind. Yeah. I was so interested in like looking for some form of stability and um, all of that. Yeah. That that was actually a really a real distraction from this other thing that I was like, I'm cool with being big. It's a bummer I can't find clothes to fit. But mm. besides that, everyone walking around being like, you're tall, you're tall. It's like, yeah, okay. And also I have a very tall mother. Mm. And uh, she, she was quite good about it. Um, I mean, she's very, she was very tall, like six, two and a half. Wow. So I grew up with this person, at least when I, you know, moved back in with her that I was like, these, this is normal. Sure. You know? Sure. And she carried herself in a way that was like, yeah. confident and you knew that that was something she's to She's a little to. bit in a haze. I think she hazed it out. So she seemed like she was up in the clouds a little bit oh. more. So, cause imagine in her day, how tall she was. Right. Like if I'm six three and everyone goes, wow, that's pretty tall. Yeah. That would be like being six five or six six today. I mean, she's walking gotcha. around Long Island, New York, at almost six foot three. Wow. Um, so I think we handled it differently, but it wasn't unusual. Um, and it's really, it's like everything in life. I think it's however we see it is how it is. Right. And um, that's really hard to know when you're a young person. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. It was there a certain point where that shifted, where you're like, shit, like being tall is actually, makes me unique. I'm sure. stronger, people respect me more. Like when did that psychologically shift for you? You know, sports gave me a purpose, gave me a reason. You know, I used to, I've said this a few times where people go like, oh, that's why you're tall. And I'm like, sure. That's why I'm told. Wait, what do you mean? They'd be like, oh, you, do you play basketball and volleyball like in high school? And yeah. when I finally started answering yes, because I was late to all of that. Right. They were like, oh, that's why you're so tall. I'm like, yeah, totally. Like, you know. Oh, they thought it was the reverse. Like, <laughs> well, because you play. That's how my cousin thinks, too. He has, like, a nephew, and he's like, what should I do to, like, make sure he's tall? It's like, I don't know. Yeah. He thinks, like, playing basketball is going to make you taller. I yeah, that, no, it's <laughs> not. Like, sleep with a very tall woman. I don't know. That yeah, makes yeah. kids tall, yeah, um, yeah. I think. I, I think... Um, so that gave, bought me that time, like that, that purpose, that club, my tribe, because there was other tall girls. Mm. And uh, then, you, then I played in college, and then there was other tall girls. Like, you know, everyone starts becoming the, better, the best from their school and their area, and then yep. they're the best from their state, and then they're mm. the best from their region. And then you get in the pros, and you're, like, begging for inches. Like, I'm in games where I'm like, mm. oh, my God, these girls are animals. Like, I wish I was bigger. What you a know. psychological shift, though, huh? Going but that's from, the key. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, why would I? I'm the same person. Why would all of a sudden I be like, I, I, I'm thinking, oh, I need to be bigger and stronger. Right. Because I'm around all of these people that are so gifted athletically and so powerful that, you know, you're like working for every point. Gotcha. So I think that that really, 
you know, when you, anytime you look at something from the other side or a different direction, you go, oh, the whole thing is silly. Mm. Were you tall, though, like, as, as a volleyball player? Like, were you, like, one of the tallest, or were there people that are, like, It was very six, common. Six, like Super six. common. Okay. So, you know, I, one year I played, and in my position would be, like, the center on the basketball uh, yeah. team. The middle is usually the bigger girl. Sure. And um, based on her, her role and um, responsibilities. And there was one year I was in, my, in the league, in the pros, and I was the, the shortest middle in the league. No way. Yeah, not by much. Yeah, six three, but there was one girl six four, one girl six five. Oh my god! And I'm like a small, big person. Yeah. You know, I weigh about a hundred and between seventy five and eighty. I probably played closer to one sixty five, and I, I mean, I would play with girls like six one with very big verticals, close to two hundred pounds. Holy like these crap. are girls like you know. So I'm even though I'm tall, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I, I'm just giant. Like I'm going to eat you alive. Sure. Sure. So um, I think. You know, in volleyball, what you see is consistently across the board, very tall girls. Like, you'll yeah. go to any college, top college team right now, all the girls are over 6'1", except maybe two players, right? Right. You go into basketball, you'll find a lot more of that diversity, 6'7", 6'8", 5'6", 5'7". Right. Where volleyball is sort of, like, stacked pretty even. Everyone lives between 6 and 6'4". Six, sure. Well, so I played libero when I was... Um, okay, so... Uh, you know. When I was in high school, and I always wanted to play like power. Oh yeah! And then I got to like grade eleven. I was like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Power's like six eight now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, middles are six ten, and well, so you know already. So yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that that that's when you you realize, um, you know, as special as we all are, is as common and as ununique as we all are. And I think that's what yep. happens. People think I'm so different from everybody and I'm, I have these things. It's like, yes, you are. You're special. Sure. And simultaneously, there's a lot of you. For sure. For and sure. And you learn that. Yeah. I mean, I, I just realized that like volleyball, as much as I wanted to pursue it, and I actually was recruited for the university team. And then the same year that I got in, they actually cut the funding for the team. Is it was in McGill. Yeah. Oh, and wow. um, I just realized like, listen, it's not, it's not for me because... Yeah. I think even if I pursued it, I don't know if I was like destined to to play that sport. So yeah. I think as much as you are, it's important to be self aware of like what you're good at. Sometimes it's good to be self aware of like what's not meant to be for you. Yeah. Um, oh, and by the way, you can be good at something, and you it's not for you. That's another tricky. Mm. You ever see people where they're like they have a knack for things, yeah, but it's something else. And I think that I think that that's a really important thing you're saying, which is not only that self awareness. But to really be clear about what you want to do right. and not let the outside impact you because that can confuse you. And then all of a sudden you're pursuing things and you're like, I don't even think I really like this. Sure, sure. Or that's that's really hard though, no? Because generally you really like what, what you're, you're good, good at. at. And mm -hmm. so how do you, like, is there an example that you've gone through in your life where maybe I think modeling? It's, I don't know. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> certainly. Modeling, you can't really. I mean, there are girls who are good models, right? Or yeah. uh, it's sort of like also based on like, well, how are you born and things like that. Sure. I think, um, you know, certainly that environment, I was clear that that environment served a purpose. Like you, you're not qualified. They pay you. You travel around the world. You work with really talented people. Yeah. It's pretty great. But I knew very clearly that that wasn't something I could like earn. Mm. I mean, you can show up on time and you can be polite and professional to work with. I know girls who've made careers on that as well, on top of what they look like. Just being a professional. Just die. Yeah, Cindy yeah. Crawford is an incredible example. Mm. On time early and always ready and ready to go. Sure. Um, even after, you know, all these years. So I think there's that part you can contribute. But really it's when you're doing something, and you know this because you're an entrepreneur, when you wake up and you think, man, it's been tough for these last 12 months or 18 months or the grinds of, you know, starting anything new and it, and it's where I need to be. Mm. And I think sometimes when you just get whisked away into things like, well, I'm good at it. It's like, yes, but are you asking yourself the real questions? Yeah. Like, am I, do I believe in this? Am I really dedicated and committed to this? Would I do this no matter what? Sure. And I think that, and I think I even had that with volleyball where I got to a place in my professional career where I thought, yes, okay, I can do this. Yes. I'm known for this. Um, but there might be some other things that mm. I want to explore and don't be afraid to, to sort of remove yourself from that kind of like, Oh, you're that you, you created that thing or you're the CEO. It's like, 
okay, yes, I did that, you know. Mm. So I think it's, it's, it's both. It's being honest with yourself so you can navigate the landscape, but it's also going like, is this what I should re really be doing even if it's easy for me? For sure. I mean, particularly with mo I mean, this, I just don't know anything about that side of things. Yeah. But with volleyball, at least, I mean, I could be a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I mean, with volleyball, at least you're able to practice yeah. skill sets. Like, you're able to be yeah. on your own or be with someone else and there's techniques for that, right? And you can get better. You can yeah. visibly see yourself getting better yeah. and it's immediate feedback. Whereas, I guess, from you to go from that to modeling, yeah. maybe there's a skill that you develop, I don't know. So, like, yeah. what was that transition like to go from something where you can clearly see an immediate improvement yeah. to modeling where... It's a lot of good, good fortune. Yes. Yep. It's a lot of good fortune. It, I just was probably able to recognize it really quickly because I had the contrast. Sure. Especially when I was able to work. You're like, oh, wait a second. I'm clear that this is, like, really good fortune coming yes. my way. And yes, when I get the opportunity in jobs like modeling or acting, the work is getting the work. Yep. It's not showing up to set. I mean, yes, you have to know, you know, for actors, like, okay, know your lines and do a good job. But getting the work is the work. And so getting get booked. And you a good manager, no, like, no you have to have, like, for me, it was, like, some photographer, this very uh, famous photographer, Stephen Mizell. I reminded him of another girl that was working a ton right then, and she was also very big. Her name was Rachel Williams. I owe her quite a bit because yeah. uh, she was in some ways even bigger than I was as phys physically. Yep. Yep. And so there was room. And he, when someone like that goes, they're fabulous, then people go, oh, fabulous. Uh, it's all that BS, right? No, people, it's so interesting when someone, that's why I always appreciate when someone is willing to come forward first and go, I really like that. Mm. They don't wait for everybody to go, we like that. You ever do that in business? Like, for that's sure. a good idea. Good idea. Good idea. It's like, like, oh, okay. Venture capitalists all the time. Exactly. Yeah. That's on trend. It's like, oh, you have no original idea, yeah. thought, opinion at all, right? So sure. when someone's like, oh, I like that. Weird. Yeah. You know, mm. you're just like. Well, you what know? do you think? what do you think about this whole like, plus size movement that's been happening yeah what are your honest thoughts about it coming from like yeah. a modeling background yeah and this idea of like trends for the sake of being a trend you know listen it's a reflection of of who's buying right yeah. with that that what i appreciate is like hey listen if if we are you know larger in sizes and the market um is saying we're going to acknowledge that because yeah. for a long time they're only showing 16 to 20 year old size zero, you know, True. twos. And True. there's a whole group out there saying, hey, there's nothing for me mm. and I want things for me. And my only thing about around that conversation is just um, people's health. That's it. And, yeah. um, you know, listen, I've never been one to be overly PC uh, and I, I certainly don't want to start now, but that's always been my focus. Like health? Just health. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. How's your heart? You know, how, how's your breathing? Like these simple things. So for me, um, you, you know, on certain scales, I would be maybe obese, at, you know, at 180, right? So I think it's it's taking all the no no one size does fit all. Yeah. Um, so it isn't. I, I believe in saying, hey, I love myself, and um, I'll use myself as an example. Okay, I I I see what's good but also there's these things I'm working on and some mm. of them by the way are physical practice right like I need to continue to work on my flexibility but also in my personality sure like I, there are so many ways I can be a better person so all I would say as long as we're looking at our own sort of card and being honest with ourselves yeah. whether it's hey I I could probably find more time to take a walk and I I don't need to eat that yeah. um how am I feeling and also what are the things inside that I need to work on. Yeah. And um, yeah, but you know, listen, there's a, there's a very interesting time for me. Uh, I have, you know, three daughters and I get, I have to learn from them all the time. Sure. You know, even about like the feminine movement and all of these things, because yeah. I'm, I'm sort of saying, okay, well she's protesting without a bra on and a white wife beater where my generation, that was, you were also sending a message or your entire Instagram is full of your pictures of your breasts and your butt, yeah. but you're saying, take me seriously and I don't wanna be, and she's saying, my 16 year old actually taught me this, where she's like, listen, this is an F you 
that I could dress like this yeah. and here's my, and I, and no one should harass me. And I'm like, fair enough. But so I think it's, there's a lot of shaking out going on right yeah. now. I mean, that's, that's similar to, I guess, how people are treating the whole plus model everything. That's what I'm saying. Thing, so there's just right? a lot it's of just, shaking out yeah. right now. And I'm, I am careful. I am observing a lot of things and I'm trying to understand them better. Yeah. Because also, like, my brain's hardwired a certain way. I grew up a certain way. Sure. And so sure. now I'm trying to, you know, like, my daughter's, like, again, my 16-year-old's, like, my biggest. She's my middle. But she's, like, I'm, she goes, I'm not saying it's right, but it's an F you. Yeah. I heard it's put really, really well by a biologist, a woman. Okay. And she said, should you be able to walk through the town as a woman, naked and oiled up safely? Yeah. Yes, you should. But okay. you shouldn't want to. Right. So within that is like all this nuance that nobody can or will address. Sure. Which is like biology, impulses, yeah. signaling, all kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll say it. I, I don't like it. I don't like the idea of like the whole plus size. Movement. I think I think Instagram, that's a different world that maybe I don't understand. But you're, you're encouraging people to be unhealthy in many ways. And I think what you're saying makes sense when you explain it, but when you're putting them in front of a magazine and there's 14 yeah. year old girls that are watching it, yeah. they don't get that internal explanation of like, listen, this is what it is, but here's yeah. what you should actually feel inside. Yeah. And I think you're, you're making it okay in certain ways. Yeah. Just, I guess perhaps because of like the way America already is like, we're, what, what are we the second most, I think Mexico's first, like in terms of having the fattest oh, yeah. people or something like that. Well, okay, so here's an interesting idea. Let's say someone will say to me, oh, I have, I inherited my family's genetics. And I'm like, no, you inherited their lifestyle. Yeah. More, so let's say you have a young person, a girl, and she's 15, and she did grow up in a home where they ate a certain way, and that's what they were doing. And as a byproduct, now she's arrived at a place where maybe she's carrying a little extra weight. So there's a couple things, a couple dynamics going on. One could be I could look out and I could see someone who is beautiful and called beautiful. Yeah. And that gives me value mm. as this 15-year-old girl. Yeah. Because what everyone else is saying is only this stick-thin girl is valuable and beautiful. Sure. And that's not true, right? Sure. So if we could do that to a place of saying you're supported, you are special, you're valuable. Yeah. And by the way, we're not valuable because of our beauty. It's just that seems to be a big currency. And then say, okay, the next conversation is let's, let's talk about self-care. Mm. And it, listen, I'm never going to be a size two myself. If I was the thinnest I could be yeah. um, healthfully, I may be a size eight, right. maybe. Right. So it's not talking about that. It's the conversation of your best self. Because exactly. some girls, by the way, yeah. bigger butts, bigger thighs, I have a kid like that. I have, I have certain body parts like that. So it's For not sure. about like be like that image or that person that's impossible to fit into. Yeah. But take a look at yourself and say, in what ways, internally and externally, could I just be my best? Yes. That's all. Yeah. I'm and totally on board with that. Yes. But it is. It's tricky. Yeah. And uh, everybody just wants to be like, I accept myself and it's good and I love myself. And I'm like, okay, but it's more complicated than that. Yeah. And it's unfair, actually, to put that out there and think it's going to solve everything. Yeah. I mean, it, the, yeah. It's hard. For sure. I mean, there's a concrete evidence, like, there's certain things that you should generally be a lean person. And I think yeah. encouraging that is it's confusing. But in terms of best self, I well, mean... Well, they don't know about health, though. Right. You know, like, area, like, it's not about, like, oh, you're big. It's like, okay, but anytime we have extra load around the organs, it's yeah. tough on us and we're more open to certain things. Yes. Susceptible to certain you know, things, diabetes and certain diseases. So sure. I think it's like, that's a pretty unsexy conversation. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not one to have it in a magazine, I guess. So it's like it, the whole thing is yeah. kind of backwards in many yeah. ways. Get but the fat off your organs. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Page three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, in terms of best self, for sure. I mean, I it, particularly growing up in Korea and just, oh, wow. it's just like having a different beauty standard is another thing. Like well, I, they're tough there. They're very tough, especially in Korea. I would be yeah. like a farmer with this brown skin, you know. Uh, I'm a peasant. You're close to a peasant. I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah you're I'm a little too there. brown, buddy. <laughs> too tan. Yeah, maybe I should be get out of Mexico. <laughs> Don't be in Mexico. Yeah, but I mean, I think I think you know I have a certain not me, I guess particularly, but I know from my my mom, my family, they have a certain standard of beauty that they're attracted to that they yeah. think is like the ideal image, whether it's from the media from Asia, uh, and coming here, especially when I was seven. 
that completely switched where friends of mine would, would say like, oh, this girl is like really beautiful. And, and I'd be like, I was so confused. Yeah. You know, I just was not used to seeing like girls with like blonde hair oh, and yeah. everything. Even though that was idolized, it just wasn't like something I could connect to. Sure. But I think if you look at it from a global scale, for sure, like being your best self works because there's going to be someone that's going to be attracted to you. There's yeah. someone that's going to think you're beautiful, no matter if you think, you know, you're not just because of what friends around you say, you know? That's right. And, and I think, you know, listen, you go to different cultures, Polynesian culture, you know, the original, the, some of the women before, the bigger, the better, because mm. that meant strong and that meant survival. Oh, you know, we put all this like heady stuff on the things, but I still think we're impulsive animals yep. that are walking around being like procreate procreate and everybody acts like oh it's all so conscious yes. but i think there was so much of that in there i mean i grew up in the in the west indies and the women were bigger yes and i think based on think about their journey how did they get to the west indies right only the very strong could survive that journey sure so now that's the indication biologically and the aesthetic of that's what you want Yep. That is power. And you're going to have my babies because then my babies will have that too. Mm. And I think we all, we forget all of that. The genetic drive yep. and the things that, uh, you know, it's, it's a real thing. And I don't care how civilized we are and that we can go up in the rocket. We still have that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this danger, you can press a button and get like a car, private driver, come to you. Yeah. You don't really well, need to. And swipe, 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 and all oh, this. So you know about this, okay. Yeah, of course. I'm yeah. not doing it. I hope Larry's not listening to this I podcast. Oh, Larry would just be like, what? He wouldn't even hear that. He would just go, he, if I even said that, like, can you imagine if we broke up and I'm on Tinder? He'd just be like, okay. Oh, there's a surf waiting for me, are, sorry. Are we having vegetables with dinner? Like, he would just be like, whatever, honey. Sure. Um, but I think that's, who wouldn't want? The buffet, right? But I don't know that that's the way it's supposed to be. For sure, for sure. Well, how do you how do you deal now that you have three daughters and they're yeah. they're getting into their early twenties? Um, what's who's the oldest? Well, twenty four, sixteen, and I have a twelve year old. Okay, so sixteen and twenty four. Yeah. That's getting to that age. Oh, yeah. Well, that is that age at this point. Yeah. Where, I mean, are they? Do you know? Like, do you talk about that stuff? Like dating apps, like the whole feminist movement. Like how yeah. how does that conversation go in the house? I think it's, there's. Yes, I think we're in a lot of agreement. I okay. think we could disagree on almost a lot, you know, so many things. But I think in this way, I think both Laird and I are relatively open-minded in certain ways. Or at least, see, I'm going to be my own worst critic. I'm not here to judge you. Yeah. And that's what I think they understand about us. That we're, we are, like, driven and all these things, but it's to ourselves. Mm. And... For them, it's and and I think for for Laird and I, we've decided our best shot is to model it, yeah, and be surrounded like our friends, and maybe they represent some important things, yeah, different than we do because we can't represent everything, and then the girls will make their choices. But what I see is that um, it impacts them, and they are, you know, we're, we probably have pretty similar values. Sure, sure. They just have an updated version. Yeah. A more newer version, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I think this day and age, for sure, with Instagram and social media, this idea of, like, I guess it's always been just, like, the idea of beauty being very centralized to, especially, like, younger girls, right? Oh, my 12-year-old is the one I have to worry the most for. Oh, she's only 12, though? The 12-year-old. Okay. Because of the, the, the TikTok, the... the the filters, you know, this is another conversation at another time where girls are getting things done to their face to look better here on their device, but not here uh, in real life. Yes. Right? So this is very dangerous. Yes. And my 16-year-old is not as vulnerable to it. Just that one four-year gap, I can see the huge difference. Whoa. Yeah. Have you heard of the app? Uh, what's it called? Face, face Mash or something like that? Oh, so you mean where you look like a celebrity? Uh, no, no, it's like, I think it's like a Russian app basically. Oh. And they use AI where you can take a picture of yourself I see. and I think most apps have this now and okay. you can completely change how you look. You can change like the color of your eyes. Yeah. You can make it bigger. What's you it can, called? I think it's called like face mash or something like okay, that. It was, okay. it was a huge thing just before like the whole movement where people started to take photos and they made themselves look older. It's like the similar yeah. technology. But that exists now, right? Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm sure girls use that all the time to 
And that's the thing is like this line between my real life and this fake life or the or unreal life. And well, this life is really good. So it doesn't really matter if I develop deep and meaningful relationships out here. I mean, they can't even, I mean, my younger daughter, some of her friends can't, they, they're consuming things at such a heavy level yes. and such a fast clip that to sit and be like, I have a thought, let's drill down on that thought. Let's see it all the way through. Yeah. Even at a 12-year-old level, it's not happening. Hmm. They're like popcorn. Yeah. Okay, what? What are we doing now? Oh, my God. Did you see that? It's just, <laughs> and I know it's part of the age, so I'm just like going, okay. But yeah. there's, again, it goes back to the hardwiring. That's getting, that, those tracks are getting laid down, and pretty soon movies are going to be too long. Mm. And YouTube gets on their nerves now. It's too long, too long. Yep, yep. It's, it's, it's going to be a very heavy thing. Yeah, I think Netflix is now testing out. There was a big controversy like a couple months ago where they're testing out the ability to make movies two times faster or something like that. Yeah, I have a friend who only listens to podcasts at uh, he's either at two or two and a half times, and he can get through it and he understands it and remembers it. Yeah, he's trained. He's worked up to it. Yeah, and I don't mind that because he's I've got self control and he's thirty three and it's information. He's like really bright. Yeah, but it's like Quibi. What is that? How many minutes? You know, it's like two two and a half. I don't know. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I just think sometimes there's, you know, nature is still moving at its pace. Mm -hmm. And I think we are still a part of nature. Yeah. When we, when we completely separate, even in the cadence in which we listen and communicate and learn. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to, we're going to feel frustrated. For sure. Well, I got having daughters, I'm curious to get your attention. There was, uh, I think a couple of years ago. Make me cry. What? Okay. Are you getting emotional here? No, no. I'm saying like having daughters. I'm like, yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm curious to get your t like uh, opinion on this because I think it was like five years ago, something like that. 24 year old model emailed the CEO of J.P. Morgan, yeah. uh, Jamin Diamond, and he had a public statement where he described. I'm gonna paraphrase. I'm probably gonna butcher it, but the idea is that in society, women are valued for their beauty. Yeah. And he put like a very like economical chart around this, whereas men are generally valued for Earning. status and wealth. Yeah. And the problem with that is like as men get older, they become more attractive. Yeah. As women get older, they yeah. become less attractive. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the peak age is, is like 35 or 35, 35, 35 for a woman. I would think so. So there's a diminishing return yeah. based on what he's saying. Yeah. Um, I'm actually dead. I'm not really here. <laughs> I died 15 years ago. Uh, come on. Stem cell therapy, <laughs> nutrition. You I'll got, get there. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to Korea, you're, you're, actually. <laughs> you're just fine, yeah. Cost you $2 to get yeah. a surgery there. Um, Tell me about the diminishing return. Oh, the surgery? Or the, okay. No. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's a real thing, though, for sure. It's, well, um, everyone wants to act like it's not. Yeah. And they want to be frustrated. Yeah. You know, listen, I, I have an answer to that, which is um, I, I, under, I, look, I try to look at everything and say, well, why is it that way? And some of it is, again, it's, an, it's a natural situation. And, and in the days when men were hunting, they would have a different uh, value. It would diminish as their strength and power and endurance mm -hmm. diminished. But then maybe they become a leader or wisdom or mentor to the younger men and share their experience right yeah. but now with this artificial world of like i have zeros in my bank account therefore i'm important mm. right it's just, it's a construct it's it's not it's not necessarily real because if it's like hey listen the power's out there's no fuel guess what my husband he's super important at that time yeah some guys living off of islands that uh, don't wear shoes mm -hmm. they're going to be important they know how to find food. They know where water is, right? So we just have to realize we've, we've built this world where we've all agreed. We're in agreement. Mm -hmm. You can afford a private jet. Then you represent someone who can provide. So yeah. biologically, women are saying, well, he would be a good provider. And before it was, could he protect? Could he build something? Could he kill something? Sure. Could he plant something? Sure. Um, would he help somebody? And so I think it's just it's just realizing that. So as a woman, I think I've felt the, na the, the need to adjust. Also, I grew up with a very beautiful mother, and I realized the real limitations of that early. So I was like, oh, you better try to contribute. Mm. I, I could see that very quickly. Yeah. And then you go into modeling, and you learn some other lessons about what beauty is and isn't. Yeah. And so um, 
you know, people go, oh, cry me a river like a beautiful girl. And they don't realize, like, in a way, there is a price to pay if you're not paying attention and you're abusing it. But um, I, I have some guys that I work with um, on my fitness. Uh, we have a, a brand called XPT, right? And so sure. I joke, they're all in their, they, their mid-30s, real handsome, virile guys, whatever. Yeah. And I say to, I was saying to a friend of mine, I'm in a place now in my life I'm not having any more children. I have a, I have a very uh, great partner, but regardless, I don't. I'm not interested if these guys want to have sex with me. I'm their boss. Mm. It's like you're not attracted to them. It's not about that. We're past that. So I'm like, oh, a few fine lines. You you think I have a few fine lines? I'm your boss. Mm. What do I care? So I think it's also women adjusting and going. Now as I move through my life, I accrue experience. Yeah. I go into business ventures. I try things. I bring value in many other ways besides anti gravity body. And like, you know, no wrinkles. Sure. And so I think it's, you know, I think men do that because they're told right away. You're only going to get a girl if you can provide something. It starts with like, you know, a car, their cool car, and then it goes out from there. Sure. And with women, it was like, oh, we have to learn that lesson too. And if nothing else, it's so that we have our own power, mm. real power. Yeah. I'm not talking about like, well, I'm somebody's wife and they're powerful, therefore I'm powerful. More importantly, the kind of power that you're willing to share, mentor, lift up someone else, and be a tough boss when you need to be. I'm talking about the power that's more complete. Not, mm -hmm. I'm powerful, but like, oh, you're down there and you, you, you're capable and I can see that you're trying to work hard. Let me give you a little lift. Right. Because someone did that for me or whatever. So I think it's also kind of shifting the thinking. But yeah, if they don't think that, I mean... Women play, they're like, ace, ace, ace. And then they're pissed because they go to the deck one day and you're like, it's not it. It's yeah. not there anymore. Yeah. And someone else has the aces. So I think it's, you better, you should pay attention. Yeah. I, I, are you familiar with like Jordan Peterson? I love Jordan Peterson. He, he talks I don't know about what's that a lot. controversial about Jordan Peterson. He said, uh, oh, I know he about was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He said, yeah, what was it? No, no, go ahead. I actually no, forgot. No, I'd like to know. <laughs> I, I mean, I know all the things that he said. I just don't know what's controversial. Um, well, you're pretty controversial in some ways. That's Am I? What, that, I'm I mean, so racy. So I think I'm so down the middle. Everything's controversial today, though. Is that right? it? That's the okay, thing. Then, fine. That, I'm that's so crazy. Thing. I'm crazy. Right. Um, the thing about Jordan Peterson that I know right from the get go, he clearly likes women. Oh yeah. He loves his wife and his daughter. It is so clear that he admires women. Yeah. So if we're starting from there, it's always about intention. What do you want to say? He likes women. Sure. He's talking about things he's, that he's observed and studied and noticed. Yep. And we're upset about that. I think people watch one video, right? I think if, if you're familiar with his work and you know his lifestyle, it's a lot easier because you know someone. But I think a lot of the people, like for example, let's say you were talking about beauty being overvalued. I would imagine someone that has no idea who you were. Yeah. Tall, blonde yeah, girl. Sure. They're going to say, oh, it's easy for her to say that yes. beauty is overvalued because she's grown up her entire life based on society's standards, that she's beautiful. Yes. You know, that's just and that I, way it and works, right? by the right? way, I think it's important to acknowledge that. Yeah. I've had women say, Gabby, it's easy for you to say, and I say, I totally can acknowledge that. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I, I've used this a lot. Like, if you go to a dinner party and Oprah Winfrey was there and the number one Victoria's Secret model, even if you were a 30-year-old man, you'd probably want to sit next to Oprah. Mm, sure. Sure. Because unique and... Developing skills and being different. Pretty is very, very unusual and, and, and very common. It's everywhere. Yeah. And, and it's so fleeting. it's fleeting. So I, I never mean that in a way like I don't know how it's set up and I don't know in ways that I've had it easier than other people. I'm not suggesting that. However, I'm saying from standing where I stand, and I'm saying this for 30 years, I've been saying it. It's like, Okay, but there's other things too. Sure, sure. You know. Yeah, I mean, um, oh, this is what I was going to say. With, regarding Jordy Peterson, he mentions just from like a biological perspective, you know, as, as women, you look for a provider. You look yeah. for someone that is same, on, like statistically same age or older than you, yeah. give or take a couple of years. And you look for someone that you can generally learn from, right? So... I'm actually curious to know, like, someone like Oprah Winfrey, like, who... That's probably why she's single. No, she's dating someone. 
what, she's Stedman? dating. Um, are you trying to say that she's with Stedman? I mean, I don't know what the okay, what sure. the details are. Yeah, sweetie, but, I'll see you in a few months. Mwah, love you. How, she's not attracted to him, is she? <laughs> I, it's not about that. It's about what does she? She doesn't need that. She's on yeah. a different mission. Sure. Her trip is her work and what she's putting out into the world. So that I think that was a conscious decision of like, she's not going to find a guy with more juice than her. Mm. So it's pretty tricky. Yeah. And so better just like she's on a mission doing good everywhere and probably found this guy early and they have a connection and it's like, yeah, cute. Right. But that's probably not what she needs. It's not like that. That's not her thing. And that's a really instinct. important thing. Yeah. Because it's so beautiful when you see people go, this is the way I want to do it. It's not about someone going, you should be married and you should have children. No, you shouldn't. Mm. You should do it the way you want to do it and do it really well. Right. Whatever that is. And right. be courageous in doing that. And also, the whole thing she's doing is she's contributing. Yeah. She's contributing. And that, for me, is what's important. Not contribute the way we tell you to contribute and contribute the conventional way. Just sure. contribute. Sure. You think it's getting trickier for, for women as women start to make equal, or if not more in many ways, than men yeah. to find a partner that they're really going to be attracted to, especially as they enter their 30s? Like what's yeah, and especially as men also don't know, no offense to men, they're not being taught how to be men. Right. They're not communicating, <laughs> yeah. um, they're, and they're scared, as they should be. Holy cow. Can I tell her she looks pretty? Should I open the door? Can I pay the bill? Uh, you know, they're so they're handcuffed, right? Yeah. And so they're not they're not being encouraged. I I've I have talked a lot about men need advocates right now about the beautiful traits that are masculine, perceived as masculine. Sure. Think about it: protectiveness, helpfulness, um, honesty. You know, there's a lot of qualities that are so valuable that culturally, like we talk about needing women to inject into culture and to work society to create that sort of full, rich experience. Well, we need men to keep being men. Yes. Right? We need to go, we're making a decision. We're going there. Even if it's wrong. Yeah. We need that. We need that in the world. We need that in business. We need that in relationships. Right? Yeah. And so I think it's important now that the conversation is really about humanity, elevating humanity, not elevating only women or, or, or the tyrant men. There's been people who've had very bad behavior. Yes. And I don't think it's, and yes, it happened to be men because if you see how it goes because of the, you know, reproductive responsibility of women, it sort of would be very easy to see how it got lopsided. It's very easy to see. Yeah. However, now that we're here, I think the more important conversation is about humanity and also elevating men because I know a lot of good men. Half the really great people I know are men. I'm married to an exceptional man. Um, and so I don't. I want my daughters to grow up with these traits. I have been protected by my husband. I have had my house saved in fires by my husband. Oh, wow. I have had, as a parenting partner, real comfort and clarity brought from his point of view when I'm circling the, you know, the drain. Sure. And, um, and he likes women. I mean, we have three daughters. And he's like, oh, yeah. sweetie, go get them, you know. Um, so I think in there, there's a really delicate conversation because for me as a very alpha female, when I met Laird, I made 10 times the money he had. Oh, wow. Easily. You were a model back then, right? I was, no, I was already a professional athlete. Oh, okay, so I had okay. my Nike contract. I had all the stuff going on. Yeah. But there's just certain things because of his skill set. And I don't mean surfing big waves. I mean like flat tire, fix it, do it, lift it, bend, you know, fix it, whatever. Sure. That I was like, I, I don't have that skill set. This is a person who I'm going to function better in mm. the world with. So if, if money is the only litmus test for this attraction, yes, men are in trouble. Yeah. So if we can encourage them that having other things also are still important, they will continue to develop those skills. And I don't mean this on a computer. Right. Because, again, that, that, is, that works when it works. When, like, shit goes really south... That has nothing to do with the computer. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the only issue is that it's it's just tough for, especially when something everything is so convenient. I know. To be able to even show off that skill, and particularly someone like yeah, having daughters that are twelve that have grown up in such a convenient society, do you think their brain is hardwired to be able to value that the same way that perhaps someone that didn't grow up with this convenience 
has? Yes and no. I think like for my daughters, because they grew up with my husband, they see that trait all the time okay. come through. Okay. Oh, I need this fixed. This is broken. We've been in situations. So I think they understand that also even just being loving, my husband is very loving and he has brotherhoods with other men mm. and like he's gone to the aid of people and people have, you know, it's, they've seen all that. We, we, that connection, that community, you probably see that more in Mexico city. Yeah. It's like, we can't afford really to lose that mm. because when you talk about, if you talk about Jordan Peterson or, uh, you know, true warriors, right. Our survival is based on cooperation. Yeah. It's not based on competition. And so if we can flip it and say, how strong and powerful can I be so I can contribute that to, to my tribe, yeah. no matter how big my tribe is. And I think that we're not, we're not really hearing that. And yeah. I understand the convenience. So that means seek it. Sure. You got to go out and find someone who's like, hey, can you teach me how to do this and this and this? And I think men also intuitively go towards learning that way very well. Yeah, I think we can adjust for sure. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just a very confusing time. I think in some ways I actually enjoy dating in Mexico City better because simple. it's, yeah, the, the roles are simple. They're still, uh, they still value the machismo yeah. role that men play. I think there's obviously scale where it's too far for sure. It, but this it, is it. But it's, it's just so much easier. Whereas yeah. here, just like, I dated a girl here like and she, her Instagram profile says feminist on her like bio and... I was like, okay, I gotta get ready for this mentally. And we go on the date, but at the end of the date, she wants me to pay for it. You know, she wants me to open the door. She, she her, her actions are not matching up with her words, and I'm totally okay with it. Like that's you are. I'm okay with playing that role, right? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm just confused because of who she wants to be versus uh, what she actually wants from a guy. Well, and also, like I would say, I have lived an entire dedicated life to being a feminist. Yeah. Like, I bang iron. I put, I went to school in an athletic scholarship. Like, I feel that way, and I so try to keep it clear with my partner that in our dynamic, I I will take on the feminine energy because that's also what I would like. Mm. I would like to express that side. What What happens is 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 girls or people, I should say, they won't develop themselves. They'll just have the expectation. Hmm. So if I say to you, I'm a feminist, but I'm not, I haven't actually developed myself, right. I think that's it goes always about back to those things. I'll do the work on myself. You do the work on yourself. We'll come together. If we don't agree on something, we can discuss it. But I think for everyone to demand it, want it, whine about it, it's like, well, what are you actually doing? Yeah. What are you doing? What are you, what are you making strong within yourself? Besides your eyelashes, right? The eyelash game is strong now. Yeah, the yeah. makeup game is super strong. Oh yeah. Yeah. But if you talk about real feminists, it's like, are you encouraging? Are you helping other women? Are you? And and actually, I think the role of women in culture is is to bring a lot of love. Mm. And if you want to talk about real power, real power. It's from love. It's not from force. Sure. You know? And even if you talk about, like, men, mercy is the highest thing a man could ever show another man. What does that mean? It means he's probably in charge. Right. So I think we've gotten confused about traits that are, like, for real. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'm actually curious to know, like, with, with you and Laird, just given that both of you guys are pretty A-types. Yeah. You guys are both kind of alpha. Mm hmm how does that dynamic work? Because certainly, generally, relationships, whether you're, whether you're gay or whether you're yeah. heterosexual, someone has to play that masculine role, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. So are there times where just because of how you're used to playing more of the alpha character, do you have to, do you almost feel like you have to step down a little bit just to make way for, for Laird? What's the dynamic like? See, I think that's where we, we get into it, women get into it, because we think feminine is is less or down or behind. For me, feminine is everywhere, meaning uh, my awareness of my family, what's happening in our work lives. My feminine role is like 
it's sort of a nurturing, you know, sort of big open circle that everyone in my family and my immediate circle can go into sure. and get, you know, loved, sometimes zapped, um, you know, food and, and uh, okay, we're doing this at two o'clock. It's, it's not behind and it's not below. It's just in a different, it's sort of a different form that's moving around. I think we're more adaptable in certain ways than men mm. when it comes to that emotional landscape, setting the tone. I can easily set the tone in my house. And I don't know that Laird would like to, I'm sure. I don't know that he's so good at it, mm. right? So it's me saying like, you know, by me showing kindness and lovingness with him, it, you know, comes back times 10. I think it's, so I think people embracing the feminine energy, it's, it's probably the most, that's what, I mean, that's why they call mother nature or her. Because mm. it's probably in the end the most powerful. And with the masculine, you know, with a lot of things with Laird, I like aim Laird and he, you know, he's going. Yeah. Like, or if like some, we've been in some, you know, we've had floods and had all these things and Laird goes right into action. One of my kids gets hurt. He goes right into action. I might have that moment, that pause. Mm. Um, and I never feel less than. If anything, I get, I'm, I'm loved and I'm cherished and I'm told like, oh, you want to do that? Great. I think sure. you're going to be great at it. Sure. Um, and conversely, I think showing him that he's appreciated and that he's believed in and he is cared for, like the physical care, and people may or may not agree with that, but... Physical care, what do you mean? Like, here's food and here's sex and here's clean clothes and go get them. Gotcha. You know, and it's, it's very simple. Women are, I find, certainly my needs are way more complicated than Laird's needs. Right. And Laird has been really masterful because he's surrounded by women about going, not what she's saying, what does she mean, first of all. <laughs> she's that in front of your daughters. Yeah, and to me too. <laughs> like if you're like a guy that's been around women, you're like, okay, I hear what she's saying. What does she mean? Meaning like, what does she really need right now? Yeah. It could be like, I'm flipping out about something and he's like, just goes over here and it's like, give me a hug instead of like, what are you flipping out about? Huh. So I think there's mastery also for men who around women that never gets acknowledged. Yeah. It's like it's a guy who has a difficult. lot of sisters or a mom and you're just like, look at him. He's masterful. He's managing her. He's allowing her that space. Yeah. Because we are complex. Yeah. And it's great. Like it's so beautiful and confusing and exhausting and, you know, all the things that it is. But that's kind of the magic. Sure. Yeah. You know? I like, mean, you definitely shouldn't feel less than because there are certain things, probably a lot more things that you can do that there probably has no idea. Like he probably feels like disempowered in many ways not disempowered but this yeah. probably feels he says he's out of the loop yeah i'm out of the loop yeah i'm yeah. like lucky you yeah and then you step up and you, you yeah. take on that role that you're supposed to so right? i think i embrace it differently and also i'm i'm very sure and when i say this in my insignificance on this planet i am very sure of whatever uh you know power supposedly mm. that i possess sure. i'm not unsure of that i'm i'm capable of you know, speaking up for myself, I'm capable of figuring out how to navigate work. I'm, I can walk away if I needed to, you know, if Lair just wasn't showing up anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's not, so I think a lot of times when you hear the, the other voice that's shrill like we, it's also because there has been injustices, so I understand that. Sure. But simultaneously, it's because there's an unsuredness of one's power. Mm. And uh, And again, and that's all rooted in we're all really nothing. And if and living close to that idea keeps things very clear. Yeah. I am no one. I am nothing. I'm doing the best I can. I'm so grateful I have people that I love around me. Mm. And I'm just going to show up each day and, and just try the best that I can and try to keep learning and trying new things. Yeah. You know? And I don't know. I think the devices have alienated us in a way that we're going to have to figure out how to how to connect in addition to that, because I know it's not going anywhere. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's going to be embedded in our bodies at, at, at a certain point, you yes. know? Yeah. Unless we just forego it and we become a different type of human, which is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess to bring it to full circle, so you had, you had these multiple roles and mm -hmm. this, I guess, more of a purpose when you were, as an athlete, it was very simple. This is like what you need to do. And then you went for modeling mm -hmm. um, and then you became a mother. 
and, and, and a wife. But at this point in your career now, I know you're starting a podcast. You've started it already. Yeah, I have um, a podcast. I used to have one with Neil Strauss, and now I have one by myself. And then we have several businesses. We sure. have uh, XPT, which is a fitness arm, and then uh, Laird Superfood. It's a coffee and creamer business that mm -hmm. is actually um, killing it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's the unit. Once in a while, you know, you start 20 businesses, you do can, you can get a <laughs> One unicorn. hits out of the park. Mm -hmm. That's you amazing. You know how that goes. For sure. Yeah. Um, so to close off, what's what's the message that you want people to take away, whether it's it's a it's a 12-year-old girl that's yeah. watching this, whether it's a 29-year-old man or 49-year-old man? I think it's 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 really a simple message and it's just a reminder. It's we we all we are who we are and we are born with certain inclinations more so than yeah. others. And I think if we can figure that out and then maximize that, but also continue to work on the weaknesses. And I think the idea is it's about creating value. Mm. And so for me, when I show up, it's like, how can I create value? Whether it's to support somebody, show up in a work way, whatever. And to remind people that it, nothing is easy. For me to have gone into sports wasn't easy for me to do these businesses, for you to do your businesses. None of it is easy. That is actually part of the story. Yeah. And so make sure you're clear with your reasons, your intentions, and that you really want to show up for that thing, not just because everyone's doing it or you think you can make a bunch of money or get a lot of attention because that's not really that rewarding. And, like, give it a go. Like, failure is part of success. And um, as cliche as it is, um, it, it might be in some ways more part of success than the actual success. Sure. And don't be afraid of that. It sucks, and you can survive it. It sucks. I like that, yeah. It does suck. Yeah. Yeah. It's a grind. I mean, how long do you want to, like, run a boulder up a mountain? And you're like, wow, sometimes it takes longer than I wanted. Definitely. Very powerful. Yeah, well, All right, Gabby Reese. Uh, where can people find you online? What uh, do they want you to do? Instagram, want? Gabby Reese. Yeah. And I have the Gabby Reese show. And, um, and really just my thing is I'm trying to learn, and I would love for people to teach me, how are we going to hmm. move forward now in this new world that we've had since like what 2007 2008 it's a confusing world yeah so for they sure. just keep at it and the last thing i always say to people is you know like love yourself but also you have to love each other because if you really want to be a badass you have to do that for sure very powerful all right guys thank you guys okay. so much for listening Aloha. Aloha.